Looks like hamburger lasagna. See all that? Hamburger lasagna. Let's talk about radiator supports. So the one you see right here, that's black primer. That's the original to my 75C10. And then we have this one that's painted a uh, kind of medium gray. That's a 2K epoxy primer that's on that. And I actually had both of those sandblasted and then we epoxy primered them. So this guy and this guy both really good and have a little bit of rust right below where the battery tray would be. Here's the deal. I got the parts truck. When I got the parts truck, this radiator support is actually relatively, probably the cleanest radiator support I've ever seen. Usually right below that battery box right there, this is all rusted out. Let me show you what I'm talking about. We come on over to option number two. Remember option one was my original one, okay? Option two was a version that I got out of a pick and pull in Reno, Nevada, okay? And right below the battery box, you're gonna see right here, the little battery box. What do you see there? Hamburger lasagna. Looks like hamburger lasagna. See all that? Hamburger lasagna. This one is off my 1975 C10 Scottsdale. This truck did not have a hood release latch inside the cab. Now you had a spring here, right? You had a pin that came down right here from your hood. And then you had an actual hook latch, a safety latch that was right here. This came off a 1976. I'm not sure what trim package it had, but this one had a hood release latch inside of the cab. And if you look, there we go. If you had a truck that did not have a hood release inside the cab, you would have this option right here. Now, if you did, it would have been this option right here. So this cutout right here would have been your safety latch. And right here would have been the release. If you had the release from the inside of your cab, it'd be right here. I got something else for you. That dot and that dot right there. Those two are there for this guy right here. If you happen to run a big block 454 and you have an oil cooler, you would end up drilling out those two. So are gonna line up with these two bolts. It's a standard half inch bolts that bolts all this together. All those half inch bolts, you'll drill those out. And then this guy, let me just show you how it works right here, would end up being right here, right here. I'm back. Another weekend of building this C10 truck. So what we're going to do, we're going to start off today by laying down some epoxy primer on my radiator support. I've got three radiator supports. The first one was original to my C10. The second one I got out of a pick and pull in Reno, Nevada. And the third one is right here. So it's been media blasted and I want to throw on some uh, 2K epoxy primer on this thing and get this ready to mock up. You might be wondering why the hell am I, I have three radiator supports. Well, the first one, it was just off a little bit. It wasn't quite fitting quite right. So I bought one out of Pick and Pull in Reno, Nevada, uh, the last hot August night show. And here it is right here. It's already been media blasted and I've already sprayed it with the 2K epoxy primer. The problem with this is we've got, oh snap, Hamburger lasagna, hamburger lasagna. So all this, even though it was blasted, um, it still has this real rough pitted uh, section right here, which is underneath the battery. So my plan was to get my first one and sacrifice a piece off the first one off that side and then graft it into here and replace all that. And that's quite a bit of work. But then I got a donor truck. When I got the donor truck, I looked at that radiator support and right underneath the battery, Primo. 
The first one I've ever seen that isn't all rusted out right here from all the leaves and dirt, everything that falls underneath here. So your battery sits right above this area right here. A lot of moisture gets trapped in there and it just rots out. This one's in great condition. As you can see, I've already had it blasted and I gotta do a little bit of touch up on it, a little bit of clean up. Once it's cleaned and touched up, I'm gonna hit it today with some 2K epoxy primer. I've got both these pieces suspended with bailing wire. You take this bailing wire and you put it inside your drill and you twist two, two pieces together. This sounds pretty rigid. It's great for hanging parts and stuff like that. You just paint over them. When I'm done, I just kind of fold them up out of the way. When I need them, drop them down, hang something and paint it. Okay, so when it comes to the painting, I'm going to got my stir sticks right here. Got some safety gear. Some tack rags. I got some scotch brite to clean up a few areas that didn't get hit that well with the media blasting. Got some paper towels. I'm using this Harbor Freight gun. This is a $15 special. It works great. Uh, it's great for spraying um, the primers. You just kind of get it out there. Uh, eventually the, the guns get kind of clogged up and you just throw them away and buy a new one. You can't beat $15 and I'm not spraying base coat or clear, clear coat, which you'd want a really good gun for that. So we're just gonna use this uh, Harbor Freight Special. I just picked up a new one right here, 15 bucks, we're good to go. I got some mixing cups right here. We're gonna mix this up. Um, I got some lacquer thinner to do clean up, clean up my gun. And this is what I'm using. I'm using this 2K epoxy primer, it's just gray. You get it in uh, white or black. I just picked the gray. It works out great. It's uh, mixed at a two to one ratio. So we also have the catalyst, the part B right here. We'll be mixing that up. Little tip, when you go use this paint and you take off the lid, what I like to do is I like to take a little flathead screwdriver right here. And I just go right into that little groove where the uh, lid locks into. I just take my hammer and just hammer a couple little holes in it. So that way when I pour this into the mixing cup and I set it back down, all that paint and that groove can actually funnel back into the can. So just a little tip if you're trying to pour out of a one gallon container, that works great. Got my little moisture trap. I got moisture traps on my air compressor, but I like adding this onto uh, whatever gun that I'm using. So we're gonna be also using this moisture trap to get the moisture out of the paint.
while I was paying the radiator support didn't realize it but it started to rain so I had my frame outside had the bed outside and uh, everything got wet so I just use a blower blow it off but uh, you know it kind of sucks because the last time I painted the radiator support the uh, the second one I got it rain too so my tip if you're gonna paint a radiator support check the weather <laughs> don't be that guy that paints a radiator support twice and it rains <sighs> it's not what I wanted well we uh, magically got everything in the garage now so I think we're gonna be okay uh, I should probably turn on the garage heater warm this up so a lot of this moisture can evaporate Damn it. you know I got my drive shaft in there I got the wheel tubs Are you copying me? It sounds like you're copying me everything I say. I was trying to make, uh, uh, I was trying to make my original I work with, my I was trying to make my original work with, uh, with the, the radiator support that I got out of pick and pull in Reno, Nevada. Are you copying me? 